Welcome everyone to the Witches Movie Coven. Happy Beltane, happy Melly Day. A couple days late, but you know, it works in Hollywood. Um, welcome, welcome. We are talking about The Wicker Man, the original Wicker Man, 1973. Um, let me quickly introduce or have people introduce themselves. My name is Patty Negri. I am one of your hosts. And we have Jason Mankey, Heather Green, Richard Leal Lallard, and Courtney Buckley. So if everybody wants to say hi, I just literally flew in moments ago, just enough to put my horns on and a little blush. No eye makeup because. And boy, are your arms tired. And boy, are my arms tired. <laughs> I was just going to say, you look fabulous with your horns and your May crown. And you are our May queen tonight. And I love it. Okay. I'll Yay. take it. It's, it's, a, it's a toss between Richard Leo <clears throat> and myself, but it's okay. No, I think you're definitely the May queen. I'm just, I'm just a show queen. There's a difference. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so how is everybody? Why don't we do a little bit of a check-in and then get to the movie? Um, who wants to go first? Courtney Buckley, that's her. Yeah, me. Mm -hmm. That's me. That's me. Oh, yeah. um, I'm good, Patty. I am exhausted because I just watched four hours of The Wicker Man. Um, and, you know, yeah, I got to see Richard Lale again. Re like, the day after we did our episode last week, so I was like two times in one week, so now this week, I feel deprived of Richard Lale, and I think that you should move to Salem so that I can see you every week. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I got nothing else. That's I'm it. exhausted. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then let's move on to Jason. I'm sorry I wasn't here last weekend or last week. I was in Florida for the Florida Pagan Gathering. So it was from one sunshiny state to another celebrating Beltane with a bunch of Florida pagans and witches. It's good to be back. I really miss you all. It always feels like it's a month when I'm gone for just a week. It does. It's crazy. It does. Um, Heather, how are you? I'm doing great. Um, getting over a little bit of a, a allergy attack from the lovely spring weather, which is one of the um, uh, wonderful things that happens here in the South um, when uh, Beltane comes around. You know you're going to be covered in green dust and white dust and all kinds of other blessings from the trees. So, um, But I'm back and um, had a great Beltane weekend, a little May Dew on the face on May 1st, and um, while Pergus knocked, and I had a great article come out about, about that. You could check it out. So I'm happy to be with everybody here celebrating. Yay. Thank you. Richard Leal. Well, uh, speaking of being covered in white powder, that reminds me of my youth in Vegas. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> a long time ago. Um, so, yes, it is definitely Beltane. It is springtime uh, here in New York as well. And I just finished Satan Con, which was fun. Um, the best part about Satan Con, though, was leaving because I. <laughs> <laughs> I had I had some lovely friends outdoors who were screaming some lovely things that I <laughs> love to hear, and uh, you know it was I'm I'm well known so I I got the blunt of it. I mean they so the thing is I go by I, Richard Lale is my name, but Richard Lale is very difficult for people to make a swear word. It's really really difficult for someone to, to make Richard Lale. A swear word but it is not so difficult when it's just richard and they these friends out there were telling me richard we know you richard we know you you need to find anyway <laughs> i just smiled and went on but it was okay and then i got to see courtney buckley for the second time okay. and we had we had like a late lunch with i guess it was lunch uh, brunch almost i don't know it was it was a late it was a late thing and um, her son was there. It was lovely. We had a good time. And then I went to Salem and I got this crown because, you know, I needed it. Like I needed another crown. But uh, <laughs> that, that was and then I then I slept on the train and I got I got back to New York. And that was it. That was fabulous. That's beautiful. <clears throat> well, I have been traveling. I since missing last week, which I can't stand. I was doing an event in deep, deep, deep desert of Bisbee, Arizona, which I thought was deep, deep desert until this last week, I was filming in deeper, deeper Death Valley. And um, it is the, the scariest, most desolate, beautiful place 
ever. I literally spent three hours driving where I never saw another car, not another human, not a sign of civilization. My cell phone didn't work. My internet didn't work. My GPS went out and, and I didn't have Apple Music, which that in itself <laughs> was like, oh my God. And I didn't have an exact address because they won't take you. We were going to such a remote place. So it was like meet at a, a defunct ranger station. And I just, I was looking up for aliens. I'm waiting to be chipped and probed or Chutacabra. I was just, I have never, I was all by myself and not, and I'm like, I'm a city girl. I'm always saying that, but it was, a. I was filming with Zach and the guys ghost adventures. I can't talk about it yet, but honestly, one of the scariest, funnest um, adventures. And it wasn't an adventure ever, but I didn't really like Beltane for, I was here in LA for one day and it was for, for May day. And it started out raining here. I didn't even do my, workout in the beginning i went and did the walk afterwards sebastian and i went and did the walk because it were but by end of the day it was beautiful we went to the beach and we played on the beach and we jumped the bell fire and we had ribbons and scarves and um one of my better beltanes in, in a couple of years so thank you mother nature came back out because i i know uh, jason had commented that it's been more like in bulk <laughs> yeah but and today is freezing i just flew back in literally moments ago um but dang so i missed you guys terribly and we i'm miss really you we missed you too Aww. i'm glad you survived that desert i'm gonna have nightmares about that because the only thing that scares me worse than not a doll or any dolls is aliens so when like i'm terrified for you and this is that deep desert where i think that they are and no oh. one would ever know literally no. three or four hours without seeing a, a a building, a light, and the darkest. I live in the city, and it's we have light pollution, so you don't. Ah, it was fun, <laughs> but again, I'll take you next time, Courtney. Jason, we'll we'll look for some aliens. So anyway, this week's movie, and I'm literally just finish it, finishing it right now, is The Wicker Man, the original. So, um, I'm not even going to start it. Heather, do you want to do your, your Heather in Heather? <laughs> <laughs> my my uh context no. also sorry oh sorry i won't then no, courtney no, i'm the, sorry <laughs> the comment i just got the comment i just screamed so loud i'm so sorry that was visceral the, that was a visceral the alien, reaction the alien, the alien edition, edition. Of mm -hmm. mm -hmm. low. we can discuss that after the show no we, we cannot that. nope we cannot so sorry. we have lots to talk about courtney but mm -hmm. um so wicker man getting on track. So my, first of all, my book, I, I'm going to say was on American film and, and uh, television. So this falls outside of my deeper studies that I've done because it is a British film. However, the nice thing about British films, specifically by this period, is that the film industries were kind of running parallel as our cultures were running parallel. So a lot of things that happened, especially in terms of witchcraft and the occult and things really kind of affected both cultures, which again affected both films. So the films you see, so the Wicker Man is not far afield from the films you would see in the early 1970s here, but it's different because obviously it's from another culture, which is important when you're looking at films and specifically why I kept to American films to kind of keep that concentrated cultural understanding. So with this film, we're looking at the 1970, early 1970s again, of course, the aesthetic and a lot of the things we see in it are very much a part of that period of time. Um, we have to think about that period of time being a time when the occult and, um, witchcraft were something that people were interested as well as the reinterest in folk magic. We also see anxiety that was happening there as well as here, cultural and social anxiety. They were different, but they were both there. So we have that parallel going on. And horror films were very popular. Now, this particular film is considered one of the best examples of folk horror, which is a little different than just classic horror. And what is folk horror? I, I, you know, I was trying to pinpoint an easy definition to describe it to everybody today because I knew it would come up, but it's not easy to pinpoint. One of the things that I like to think about, I look for that the landscape, the focus of nature, the focus of folk culture being prominent, as well as an atmospheric uh, cinematic feel to it. 
Um, so a good example of that more recent would be Midsommar. That's definitely a folk horror. Um, at the time, uh, Crowhaven Farms is another folk horror. There's a lot of them. British, the British film industry was particularly very good at it, especially at this time of year. Uh, I'm sorry, this period of time in history. They did a lot of folk horror. Um, I will stop there, I think. Um, the only thing left to say, we could talk about how it was cut up and, and the issues with it and all this stuff, but I'm not going to, I'm going to stop there and I'm going to save my opinions of the film and my critique for after because I may disagree with, with a lot of people because this has become one of the most popular films in the pagan community, both in the UK and here. And so I will save my opinions for later. Okay. Uh one more, a couple of little historical asides from someone who's really interested in early witchcraft history. This movie has a great deal of research into how pagans really felt about things in the early 1970s and the source materials that they used in order to create some of the scenes and some of the ideas come from things that really influenced modern witchcraft and paganism, most notably The Golden Bow by James Frazier and the idea of that sacrificial king for the good of the land is something that really was popularized by Margaret Murray in her books about witchcraft beginning in the early 1920s. So I really love this because it's sort of a love letter to that 50s and 60s witchcraft in a lot of ways because they were using those same uh, materials in the construction of the film. And that's why it's popular. That's mm -hmm. why it's one of the most popular films in the pagan community here in the U.S. and in for that very reason. I mean, you have Beltane, Lamas, you have all these things that pagans were not seeing in any other movie. They were seeing witches and Satanism and all this stuff. Here you see these folk practices, like Jason said, that were that were recognizable. So yeah, that's absolutely correct. I still have I still will save my critique though. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep going back to you until you sneak it out. No. Okay, who wants to go? Courtney, since you've just spent four hours watching movie, do you want to go first on, on movie number one? Well, I feel like I am this show that we do here is making me sound like a prude because once again, there was just so many body parts in the beginning of this movie that I get why they were there. But I was like, guys, like really, again, now I'm going to have to say this. And then um, one part that I, I did like was I was actually screen laughing. See, and this is this movie, all the all these movies that we've watched recently, the older movies, I find a hard time or I, can I have words? I have a hard time calling or finding them horror. Like it doesn't they're not they're silly to me, which is hard, but um I forget where I was talking. Guys, I <laughs> The COVID brain is back. Um, the One of the parts that I really liked in the beginning of the movie, I was like scream laughing. Oh, that's what I was going to say. <clears throat> I was like scream laughing is they, when the sheriff comes outside, he's like walking to wherever he was going and they're all out in the, just, just randomly just doing it out in the, in the field. And it's like, he's like this behind the wall. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I paused and rewound that like five times to see this. <laughs> but I just, the movie was chaotic to me. Like I didn't get it. The twist at the end I thought was really good only because I couldn't follow the movie the rest of the way. I felt it, like it was, it was hard to follow. Um, and then because I know it's Jason's favorite movie after I watched that one, then I watched the remake because he told me, <laughs> He said, I have text receipts. He sent me a message and he was like, listen, this is the best movie I've ever seen. Uh, they said that there is no remake of The Wicker Man. <laughs> and it's, it's sort of like this idea that there's a movie starring Sinbad as a genie that doesn't really exist. Don't start with me about that. Yes, there is does. no Nick Cage Wicker Man. It just doesn't mm. exist. It's okay. like the fourth Indiana Jones movie. That's coming out this summer. There wasn't one previously. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> I am not a big fan of Nick Cage, especially not as big of a fan as Jason is. Um, so I was not excited to watch this. And what I can say, I I disliked it as much as I disliked the first one, but it did. The second one, I think, put the first one more into perspective for me. Like, I think the first one was better 
in the story sense like once i watched the second one i kind of like you know could follow along because a lot of the lines were the same and you know whatever but i found there were differences that made me appreciate the first one more like the second one was more serious whereas i think the first one was a little bit more chilling because they were all so happy all the time and he was like freaking out and like devolving but everyone else was just like very calm and and like this is just how we live our life is what it felt like to me whereas in the other one it was very dramatic all the time and very like they were trying to make it scary and it still wasn't but you know i i i didn't like either of them so you're welcome jason (laughs) (laughs) i did watch it but i didn't like it (laughs) okay okay jason so the wicker man isn't a perfect movie by any means and i'm always kind of torn should i feel a little bit bad for howie because i am not a fan of human sacrifice in any way shape or form however the villagers of summer isle give him plenty of opportunities not to be a sacrifice when Britt eklund tries to seduce you you get seduced right i mean that's the ultimate out right there and for whatever reason he didn't take it I think it's a fun movie. I often like to think back, like, what if I'd been a pagan in 1973? Instead, I was just a baby. But what if I had been, like, a 30-year-old pagan back then, and I'd seen this movie? It would have been the first time I'd ever seen anything approaching a pagan ritual on a big screen. How amazing and magical would that have been? And there are still moments, especially in the first half of the film, where I go, wow, those are things that look like my, my coven right now. All of the, not necessarily all the nakedness dancing around the fire outside, <laughs> probably have some clothes on. But, you know, there, there's some of that feeling there and that sense of loving the earth and loving the people you're with and not being ashamed of your body and, you know, embracing sexuality. There's so much to love in this movie. However, again, you know, maybe human sacrifice at the end wasn't how I would have liked it to end. <laughs> I, I, I guess I'll go next and we'll get to Richard Lale. Um, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I loved the, all the real ish ritual and the and joy of nature. I'm, a, I'm an elemental girl. This is like, yes, yes. More dancing naked. Yes. More sex. Yeah. You know, I don't, I'm not into human sacrifice. I'm not even into animal sacrifice. I'm not into sacrificing anything. Um, but I just loved it. And especially for way back then seeing beautiful naked bodies and sex was just was like, that's how I felt opposite of you, Courtney was like, yes, nature, love, love. And, um, you know, and then we'll just take away the sacrifice part, but I don't know. They, I just, the, the costuming, they get it. I never seen anything like this done on TV, especially from so long ago. That's 50 years ago. That's crazy how they pick it up. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I have nothing more to say. I've just finished watching it, but I really, I really liked it. I liked everything about it. And I did, I did not find it hard to follow. And I was watching it in the airport and I was watching it in the Uber and I was watching it. And I did not find it hard to follow. Made perfect sense. And I, you know, so that's me. <laughs> Richard Leal. Oh, I liked the naked bodies. I thought they were beautiful. I liked this human sacrifice. That's the only kind of sacrifice I like. <laughs> um, the one thing that I didn't like was the fact that they burst out into song oh. all the time. <laughs> oh, who does that? I, I do. Know. I love the songs. You love the songs. I love the songs. Heather breaks out into song. I break out into the song. Songs. Courtney yeah. breaks out. Jason. No. <laughs> It was it, I, the songs drove me crazy. I I I I I I break out the song, but maybe I don't know. I, it was just weird for me because there were bazooms on screen. I I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if that was what made it so weird. Um, I I I I have to admit my favorite part of the film was when Nicolas Cage pulls over. The- <laughs> <laughs> 
truck comes out of nowhere. Uh, <laughs> breathe, Jason. Breathe. Breathe, Jason. I, I, need, water. A yeah. I need a drink. I need a drink. Okay. Mm. Better? Are you okay? There's not enough whiskey for that line. Okay. <laughs> not enough. Oh, oh, the one bees. thing you just said, though, Jason, you said you didn't like that they were all young, beautiful bodies. Oh, I actually yeah. did, because after seeing some of the other movies where it's all the old naked people and the old <laughs> witches, witches look all icky, I mean, I guess a mix would be nice, but I kind of like the young you know. I like a, I just like a mixture because it represents humanity, right? It's, it's what we look like. It's, and it's what my coven looks like too, right? It's like the people that I practice witchcraft look like. So I, I always kind of prefer that. And it's nice to see everyone participating. Like they're saying, nope, nope, got to be between 18 and 27. And then you're out, right? You know, let's, let's have some, let's have some 85 year olds jumping over the fire. I'm down. I think that's, that's, you know, beautiful in its own way. I love that you all are celebrating the naked bodies when me, the movie prude, apparently, who is sweating like the sergeant was, like climbing the wall. <laughs> no! <laughs> Stay away from me. No, 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 wait a minute. I'm, not, I'm engaged to be married. Don't come in here naked. But you know, Courtney, I Nobody have, asked um, me. I, I, I love... I, I love the naked body. I think it's so beautiful. My parents, as you know, were evangelical, but they had naked art books out on their on their table because they thought it was just beautiful, like 70s art books. So the, it had a really distinct look. And, and I think the body, the human body in all its form is beautiful. And I personally am always in a suit. I'm either in a, a three-piece suit or I'm in my birthday suit. So... <laughs> there's there's no middle ground for me. I I, I like the nakedness. I, I I think the second one needed more nakedness. Yeah, the second one had no nakedness, and that made me sad, which is odd because I I, I like a little balance would be fine. But I feel like every movie we've watched recently is just like just the the tatas in the face for like a long time. <laughs> there was I mean, and it's like I mean, I'm not I, complaining. I'm not complaining entirely, but it's just like okay. I mean, get to I the remember story. when I was watching Maleficent and Sleeping Beauty and the Frog Prince. I was just amazed by the amount of nudity in all of these films and right? kept wondering how is Courtney going to react to <laughs> all of this nudity in these G-rated Disney films. Jason, thank you for bringing us your favorite <laughs> Nicolas Cage movie. <laughs> <laughs> Just staying with the naked for a moment. For years and years, there used to be a place here in Los Angeles called Elysium Fields. It was a nudist colony here in Topanga Canyon. It was beautiful. I went all the time. And I did spend one Beltane there. And it was an early, I was, I was a, a baby, young, young witch. And it wasn't necessary. I mean, they were all kind of witchy people, but it wasn't like this is what it were. But the coolest Beltane I ever saw was 200 people body painted around a maypole and there was the young beautiful bodies there was the 85 year old bodies there was the two three five year old bodies the children and it was all of humanity i i just never understood how people played tennis <laughs> <laughs> male or female because that is painful yeah <laughs> that i never quite got you know I when mean, you're probably on the grass is one thing hard game of tennis yeah. Thankfully, we've switched to pickleball now. Yeah. You know. <laughs> so, uh, all right. So, was, was that everything, Richard Lowe? That was That's everything for me okay. for now. Uh, and we're I didn't we get it. Oh, we're going so fast. Yeah, I need people. to know. I need to know Heather's view on the. Nudity. I know we do. That's why we just. I, had to I need a teammate. Well, okay. So first, before we get to my opinion on the film and the nudity, because I do have a comment on the nudity, I would like to. Uh, to say something that Robert Hicks has said that he's heard chants being done during pagan rituals, but he's never heard them breaking out into a musical. I would like to point out that this is always something that I've proposed since I've been practicing, um, that I would like to do a full on uh, pagan ritual using uh, as, as a musical that would make me so happy and be so powerful. Um, so I would just like to acknowledge that comment. So coming your way eventually, maybe to Broadway eventually too. 
So I I'm, can I could I could do that right now. Oh, Beltane. Oh, no, 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 I think everything should break into song. I, I, you know what? I lived for fame as a child, and I believe that breaking out into musical at random times is something that would make the world better. But now let's get back to the nudity. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so this is the 1970s. So the night, late, early 1970s horror films, getting back to history uh, in the U.S., <clears throat> and to a degree in, in England, had a lot of gratuitous nudity nudity and specifically female nudity and specifically uh bosoms as richard lales noted um a lot of them gratuitous and unnecessary and to the story the only point of them was this is the early 1970s let's go um so i found it unnecessary in points uh, i don't mind it when it's there and it's purposeful to the story it propels the story and it, and it has but i felt at points of this i was just like Really? <laughs> Completely unnecessary nudity. Um, I don't think it's ugly. I'm not a prude. I'm not. Yeah, I, I don't. I, you know, if it's purposeful, like I said, I have no problem with it. But I found um, that there were points in here where it was like, OK, really, is that necessary? So and that is very common to this period of time, though. So it's not unexpected um, in, in these horror films. And what bothers me more than the fact that it's there because it's expected, okay, it's a horror film from the early seventies. You expect to see the boobies, but, um, what bothers me more is that they were all women, which lends itself to what we talk about in film as being the male gaze. And so even though the film proposes that this is an egalitarian society and that women have power and all of that stuff, we still have very much a male gaze going on because there's no male nudity, almost none. I don't need, I can't recall there being much of anything, um, maybe a chest, a, a bare chest. So that is very common for the 70s too, that most of the nudity in the early 70s was women. And that was that male gaze, that misogynistic camera eye that we see coming through. So that's my feminist reading. That's my problem with that, with the nudity. Now, my reading of the film. Are you ready? Uh-oh. <laughs> I do not love this movie. I think this movie has a lot of good things in it. I always find good things in every movie. Um, my problem is, is that my problem is less about the movie than more about how people read the movie. See, I know that pagans love it because they're seeing, like Jason pointed out, these things that they'd never seen before. I totally understand that. I, but this movie, what it, what it feels like to me, my reading of this movie is not that it is a, um, celebration of pagan spirituality or a celebration of, um, nature spirituality it's actually a look at religious extremism that's my reading of it what you have is this group of people that are allegedly pagan are really in a cult this is a misogynistic cult led by a cult leader that is very in the end proven to be very unnatural and so it's it's very much a form of religious extremism, not pagan at all. Pagan is a mask. The paganism and the folk culture are mask. He, they're, they forced it on the, on the people of this island. And then you have that up against the religious extremism of Christianity. And this is very much something that people were concerned about at this time in the 70s. This, the cults of the early 70s that were tied into in sometimes f fake paganism. Not the real modern paganism that we have, but a fake paganism, fake nature, spiritual, as well as the extremism of, of uh, other forms of religion, Christianity. So for me, this movie is a, as, is a rejection of all forms of religious extremism. So that is my reading. So when I look at this movie, I go, yeah, cool, Veltane and, and all the folk culture, that's super fun. Um, but... I don't see this as a celebration of paganism at all. Actually, I see it as, as a negative 
So that's my reading of this movie. And so that's why I say, wait, hold on. I'm going to back up because a lot of pagans go, whoa, hold on. Don't touch our movie. This is our sacred movie. Jason's already uncomfortable. I can see. No, I mean, <laughs> you're not, you're not wrong. I mean, almost every movie that we love to some degree, especially like the big ones from the seventies, like this one, and then the craft, the, the witches, the pagans are always problematic to some degree, right? It's never a clean, these are the good guys type of things. Uh -uh. So when it comes to the Wicker Man, you can see what you want in it. And as I said before, human sacrifice is pretty rotten, right? It's not, <laughs> it's not where you want him to go, but you get it. I mean, Howie also is sort of rotten. Rotten. He's rotten. Yeah. So it, it makes you at least a little more sympathetic to him burning to death. But no one should ever burn to death. No. Yeah, you're, you're not wrong. And I, I'm not going to say that you're wrong. I just love it because of the influence I think that it had on paganism and... and the excitement that you get while watching it going, wow, this looks like something people would have done in pagan circles in 1973 and up until the end. Up till the end. And that's why I, I still like it. It still was a horror film of the bad people in it. He, he made it very clear that it was to control the people. It wasn't, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he made that very clear in a statement. Yep. My grandfather, well, I don't remember this. I'm not a good quoter like Miss Courtney. Um, but <laughs> I have a quote actually. You, you have it. You have it. Uh oh. See? Well, well he a, made it clear. That shows exactly what you said religious <laughs> extremism. Um, and but it doesn't take away from the, the fun pagan dressing on top of it to me. No. It, it's a horror film. <laughs> yep. And, and Christians just as bad, and the pagans, everybody, humans, they're silly. I, I, was going to, I was going to say that, too. I'm sorry to interrupt, but yes, you're right. What made the movie really scary was the cult leader aspect in a post, um, what are they, Heaven's Gate, uh, a post um, people of praise. With, no, who are they? they the, um, the Jonestown the people. The Jonestown. 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 Which was after this. But, but it, it was there, yeah. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. In a, in a post world where David Koresh, where, where these typically male members do create this sort of this, they create this sort of movement that is like Heather says, it is the male gaze. Um, now, in the newer film, I fell asleep <laughs> halfway through it because it was terrible. Um, however, if memory serves, didn't wasn't the villain the she was it was a woman and, and it was and, Olympia Dukakis who was a goddess worshiper herself in real life. Wait, what? Yeah. I thought it was Ellen Burstyn. I didn't get to watch. Oh. Uh, I thought it was Ellen Burstyn. Uh, it's I only saw it once because it doesn't exist. But I know Olympia oh. Dukakis was in the film, so <laughs> no, I'm, I'm probably wrong. I, I thought I, it was, but I she, defer to you. No, but Ellen, if it is. I think it was Ellen Burstyn, but but you're right, Jason. She was not, I don't, she wasn't a, a nature worshiper, but she was very spiritual because I did a whole thing on another film she had done in 1980 where she was really involved with different spiritual stuff. But yeah. um, it, it was so Ellen Burstyn. It was yeah. Ellen Burstyn, yeah. But so you're right, just wrong person. But yeah, you were, yeah, I mean, for that film. But and go ahead. Don't women run, the women run the society run, in the second yep. film, right? Yep. Yeah. Not that from that exists. My, from my understanding, and I've only seen parts of the second one, I thought I had seen it, but I kept confusing it with Season of the Witch, which is another Nicolas Cage movie from the same period of time. But um, the I hadn't seen all of it. And from my understanding is that movie is even more misogynistic than the original one, because that's very much of women hate men and he hates men and he's sympathetic and the women are not sympathetic. And it's just, it's just a much more of a misogynistic uh, anti-woman film from, from what I understand. So I won't say that, but, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I get it. The, the, the pagan stuff is super fun and it's, a, it's fun to imagine what a world would be like that was defined by pagan, a, a pagan culture, you know, and I think that's what this provides that fantasy of what if we had a pagan world. But unfortunately, this is really not the reality <laughs> that this film is not presenting the right reality. I, I will say, though, that when Christopher <laughs> Lee is your cult leader. It's probably pretty, it's a lot easier to buy into it, right? It's Christopher I, I Lee. Like that cult. Yeah. I, I would, I would willingly join the Christopher Lee cult. Yeah. 
Sign me up. And doesn't he dress in drag at one point in the film mm-hmm. at the end? Like you yes. see him like leading things with the long hair and he's mm-hmm. kind of dressed in drag. And all I could think was, hell yeah. I was like super excited because now, you know, people would be so upset about that. And I was like, Christopher Lee, always ahead of the curve. <laughs> always. You know, he eventually turns into Sawmon. So, you, you know, you, you might not want to join his cult. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> just saying, can, just saying. you can join nicholas cages i heard he's accepting so well, <laughs> nicholas cage is accepting and thank you renfield oh we're not there yet yeah. I, know. I haven't seen it yet <laughs> oh, we're gonna <laughs> tease tease everybody see renfield everybody see renfield <laughs> um so the quote that i pulled up actually yes. i i it's not a funny one but well it's a little funny but um, I pulled it up on my computer so I could get it right because I didn't have time to write it down. But it fits in with all of that. Like this, this quote was when I was like, "Oh yeah," and I was starting to really get the whole like comparison between the two different religions or whatever. Um, but it's when uh, Sergeant Howie says, "What religion can they possibly be learning jumping over bonfires?" And the leader guy says, Parth- "Parthenogenesis," and literally as miss rose would doubtless say in her assiduous way reproduction without sexual union and (laughs) sergeant howie says oh what is all this i mean you've got fake biology fake religion sir have these children never heard of jesus and then the cult leader goes himself the son of a virgin impregnated i believe by a ghost it is a great and i was like there it is yeah yeah um yeah i mean there were some like i laughed a lot Mm-hmm. and i did like the you know there was I, what you guys are all saying like it was it was cool to see it did feel very real a lot of the things that they were doing felt very real but i don't know it was just on it felt like a fever dream watching it. it was felt like a fever dream um but then <laughs> watching the second one or the the newer one jason's favorite made the fever dream make more sense like it it, it was a well a bet a uh, better put together movie it had a better story. Well, it was it was it was more modern. It was probably slicker um, from every all the scenes I said. It was no, slicker. I mean the old one was better because oh, the old one was better. Okay, right because the new one the new one took lines and everything directly from the old one. Okay, but the story was changed in such a way that like it took what the movie was and took it away. Like it wasn't that whole was, love affair with a woman that yeah is in the cult. I mean. What I liked about the, the 1973 version was this cop really has no connection to these people, but he's mm-hmm. just he's just a good cop. And he sees that there's this kid that's been missing and he has to make certain that this kid is found. But then in the in the, the movie that doesn't exist, Jason, mm-hmm. thank you very much. Oh, yes. His favorite, yeah. In the movie that doesn't exist, he, he, he knows this woman and it's her kid. And it was someone that he was... He was somehow in a relationship with, so I, I, I didn't, I didn't buy it. Yeah, it was weird because they did take a lot of the same lines, and that was weird to hear. But like the story was, it felt completely different, and I didn't like, I didn't like it. It made me like the original more than the, not at all. The second movie also gets rid of a lot of sort of the old folklore at the end during yeah. the. Beltane May Day celebration, they're wearing all those sort of mummers hats with the animal faces and punch. I mean, punch and Judy shows were a big deal in England for a very long time, especially during holiday periods. So seeing that on the screen like makes like the person who loves holidays in me like geek out a little bit because it's (laughs) it's such a part of those cultures and those societies. And those are like like front and center in the 1973 movie. What I think is interesting is what. Oh, go ahead, Patty. I'm sorry. No, no. I was just jumping in. I'm just looking at the comments because everybody's making these lovely comments. But somebody just said, "Is can anybody see my comments?" Uh, Mar- Mary, I haven't. I might have missed them. I was just. I just wanted to comment. People going. She. She just wanted if anybody was seeing her comments. So you might have to repost it, Mary, if it was a comment you wanted to do. We are actually reading them. We just don't comment on. And our producer put some of them up, which is great. And we want them on the comments. So yeah, 
because you guys are saying some really great stuff. So I didn't mean to interrupt. Go back to you. She was just, it was sliding down. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, that's all good. Um, my, I, I find this, what I think is interesting watching this is, um, is why it's hard and how it's hard. Because I think depending on what religious background and what, what angle, it, it's always like that. How you react to a movie depends on who you are. But I think in this case, you know, some of the stuff that's supposed to be scary in this movie to people who practice paganism is not very scary because they when you watch the camera move, it's it slides over certain things that are pagan. And I think they're supposed to evoke fear or like sinister behavior. Um, you know, I think there's a witch's ladder at one point and there's an evil eye symbol and there's all these things. And for, you know, people who who practice who are witches or practice the forms of paganism, you know, or even the naked girls jumping over the fire, which may seem sinister to some people, to us, obviously, all of us, we just go, yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> it, it, that's not going to evoke the same fear as it would in somebody who is more along the lines of a practicing, like practicing a religion like Howie. So, and the cops. So you're going to get different range of reactions to this film, depending on, you know, their, your own religious morality, your own ethics, etc. So I think that's really interesting, but you know, for me, um, like I think Richard Lale said is this, the scary part is for me is really seeing this as, as a religious extremism and the dangers of it in two different ways and the conflict that happens. That's where that, that sort of atmospheric slow, you know, creepy fear come in. Like this is one re religion that's extreme about abutting a cult that's also extreme. And, you know, what do you do with it? Um, so I think that's where people may have different reactions to it. And I think that's really interesting. I agree. It was a slow burn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Until the end, and then it sped up. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> and, and I almost remember the quote. I don't remember the quote, but like they could take a children jumping over a bonfire. Well, it would be dangerous with clothes on, which is so <laughs> when you tried to do it in a felting dress. Or, yeah. <laughs> I think someone, I think I've heard that at, at rituals, actually. <laughs> yeah. Hold up your too. robes or you're going to wind up on fire. <laughs> Skin but, burned much slower at first, you know, in that immediately. Uh, wow. Yeah. You know, I, I, I almost caught on fire once. Now, I'm I'm really allergic to cigarette smoke. But for those of you who know, I, you know, I, I this crown, I used to play Freddie Mercury. I was a different kind of queen. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I thought, well, Freddie Mercury smoked. I can smoke. I lived in Vegas. So I remember I, I, I popped a cigarette in my mouth and I, I lit it the wrong end <laughs> and it, it caught on fire. Oh, and someone, sells, someone yells, oh, my God, check out the flaming queen. And I mm -hmm. went. <laughs> <laughs> because I was Freddie Mercury on fire. Yeah. <laughs> that is funny. And to try to repeat it would be so hard, but no, I've had some, this is not a story for this movie, but I've had somebody burst into flames. I've talked about it a lot at one of my seances. It's weird having somebody burst into flames. Just I will say, speaking of things bursting into flames, in Jason's favorite version of this movie, when he digs up the grave, there's the doll and the doll's face is melted and he's screaming, who burned this? Or how did this burn? How did this burn? And I was like, ah, yes, it did. That's where it belongs. You know, one thing, another thing that makes the first movie so much better than the second movie is the songs. When I first saw it, I was like surprised that it is basically a musical. Musical. And it came out in 1973. And I think the first time the soundtrack was released was 1998. So when it, the movie originally was released, the soundtrack didn't come out. And I often wonder, had that soundtrack come out in 1973, I think those songs would have been inescapable at pagan festivals for the rest of my life. So in some ways, I'm relieved that didn't come out until later. <laughs> Um, oh, I agree with you. I think they definitely would have been. And I and I know when I hear them, every time I hear them, I'm like, oh, there it is again. There's I think they've they've definitely permeated the culture to some degree. You still degree. hear them like on pagan albums, like uh, artists will redo like corn rigs and barley rigs. Yep. And, yeah. 
and the Beltane song. They'll redo all of them. Uh-huh. Willow song, especially, I think is a favorite. Yeah, <laughs> I play those sometimes at our rituals, and my wife despises every song from The Witcher Man <laughs> soundtrack, which makes me want to play them even more. Well, yeah, I'm t- I'm telling you, those are the- that soundtrack is gonna take over the Disney songs in my car for a hot minute. I'm just gonna be honest, because yeah. that was my favorite part <laughs> for sure. <laughs> As someone who loves musicals, I'm going to say that those songs are not going to take over anything. <laughs> I Actually, that was like my least favorite. I don't mind if they had played in the background and they had been purposeful, but I, I think it would have been a much better movie if they had not actually tried to like m- make it into a musical and done it that way. I just... That was like one of my least favorite parts of the whole thing. <laughs> if they had played in the background, I would have been okay, but... Eh. I could have lost that part of it. See, I loved it because they really tried to find old English folk songs. Oh, yeah, they did. And one of the melodies, I think, is the oldest written down melody. that, And they put it in one of the songs in the movie. So I'm sort of obsessed with the soundtrack from a, you know, (laughs) historical perspective. I love that. And they did it like people doing it versus a musical. I mean, it was a musical, Mm -hmm. but I I like that. I also think... Sorry. I also think that that added to that part, the part of it that, like, made it a little bit unnerving which was that everybody he's there frantically trying to find this lost girl and everyone's like dancing and singing and being naked and doing things and like nobody cares like so that was like and like saying cryptic things so that like to me for me the song (laughs) added to that a little bit because what are these nuts doing like dancing and singing while there's a missing girl which I was like, hey, I'll join in. Like, that's what I want. To <laughs> I wouldn't say I wouldn't join in because I do love to sing and dance at any given point. But, but it, you know, as a movie, I just, I don't know. I, I think this is a fascinating and important movie, but um, I don't love it as much as mm-hmm. a lot of pagans do. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, I just, but the songs are, and you, as soon as you hear them, it's like, oh, yeah, I think I heard that. I know that song. This is just one of those things. Like every chant you hear in a pagan ritual. If and we Magnet need some ever ones. toured, I would so totally be there. Front row, extra VIP pass to, to, meet, the, to meet the musicians. It, it, would, it would be expensive and it would be totally worth it. And I'd be one of eight people in the audience. <laughs> We do need some are, new are ones, we Patty. Getting, I, see, I have not been to as many pagan. Uh, my my are more paranormal and than less. Pa- are we getting any new songs? I'm kind of tired of the old ones. No, no, we do need new ones. I completely agree with you. I, I we think do. we need Jason. We need to get on that. Let's write some. Yeah. Please. <laughs> we, need to, we need to figure it out. Yeah. The, there are there are good people writing songs, but for whatever reason, they just had the chants haven't permeated into the greater culture yet Mm-mm. we'll have we to, we'll, get... we'll have to work on it yeah we'll we need a witch's it. movie coven chant for yeah. after the tackling <laughs> okay i think that's a great idea why think... they burn why <laughs> they burn <laughs> <laughs> he has his father's eyes <laughs> he has his father's <laughs> eyes <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, I guess it is time to vote. I've got to find a wand. They just fly around my desk. There's one. All right. All right. Wicker Man. Let, we're, uh, we're just voting on the original right now. We can vote on the other one if you don't watch. I didn't watch it this time, but let's vote on the original. 1973. Wicker Man. Up, up, down. And two new, I can't even, this is too much to count. We have two ups. <laughs> One down and two neutrals. Yeah. You're completely down, Courtney. Completely down. I'll go, I'll go, I'll go to like, I don't know, seven o'clock for this. It song. can't be a zero. Come it's, on. It's Come a, on. I'm, at, me... I'm at like seven o'clock for the songs, not six o'clock. Okay. Seven o'clock for the songs. I it's have something amazing. to get off my chest. Okay. Oh. Is it I close? Think that this is the most titillating conversations that we have had. <laughs> I am so glad that we were able to keep abreast of the situation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna I nip these. Give it a it was a slow, more. This was a slow burn. Yeah. I'm just gonna nip these jokes in the bud. 
<laughs> so I don't. That was humorous. I honestly <laughs> think <laughs> up. Um, so Juan's up and neutral ties. Juan's down loses. But you guys, did you guys vote out there? Juan's up. Robert Hicks. Juan's up. Anybody else vote? Uh, 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 yeah, he is funny. Private movie kind of kidding a fair show this story. Um, but one person voted, Robert voted, and he's got ones up. So I'm sorry, ones up. Nudity, good songs, bad songs, evil Christians, evil pagans, ones up wins. Um, I don't know that we, no opinion, Lisa, uh, no opinion. Not everybody's seen it, but I, do you guys recommend going to see it? If people who watch, Absolutely. watch, people who watch. watch or listen watch to this, I do recommend people see it, whether you love yeah. it. Have, yeah. yeah, have a cup of coffee. And have your listening ears on for the songs and then try to make it through. I well, played video games while I was watching it. It takes place in Scotland, so pour yourself a nice dram of scotch yeah. and cozy up and prepare for Christopher Lee's greatest role. Yeah. And yeah. and I must say, scenery was beautiful. That island yeah. in Scotland itself, yeah. the scenery was the oceans of this was just gorgeous. I'm getting more people are voting. Keep voting. It's one's up, yeah. one's up, one's up. The the um the film was filmed on a number of different islands and it the scenery, like you said, was absolutely beautiful. And Christopher Lee think, has said that this was his famous role. He actually didn't get paid for it. Um, he decided that he loved the script so much that he would do it. It was such a low budget, they couldn't pay him at this point. So he wound up doing it for free. And he, he, he has said or uh, said at some point that this was his favorite role. Um, and so, and that's something to be said, considering what he's been in. I mean, some of the stuff he's done, Count Dooku. So um, I, I think that that is... Um, that's pretty cool. Um, and I, and I do think, I believe, I believe that watching, watching any movie bad or good is important. And, and, um, so I'll watch anything. And, and I, a professor of mine once says, how do you, how do you know what a good movie is if you don't want to know what a bad movie is? So it's, I'll watch anything. And so I definitely think if you are pagan, a witch in, in, in that, in that world at all, or interested in folk culture or interested in horror, you have to see this movie. Yeah. You, you know, because it's a standout movie in horror. It's a classic cult uh, folk horror film, British classic, and of course, uh, a beloved film of the pagan community. So I think it's definitely a marker. See it, love it, hate it, but see it. And then I have to tell like, one separate. Sorry, I was I was just gonna say like I real quick. I have to agree with that wholeheartedly because I love movies. <laughs> And I watch a lot of movies, but I watch a lot of newer movies. And I've had all these older movies on my list to be seen, like Rosemary's Baby and all the all the ones that we've seen recently. And if it weren't for you guys and it weren't for the Witch's Movie Coven, I probably wouldn't have gotten around to watching them. So I don't regret watching this. I don't regret watching any of them. But exactly that. That one with the mermaid and the knife. That was, mm. that was a nightmare. <laughs> That wasn't on the list. No, that that wasn't anybody's fault except Tubi. (laughs) Also, Heather was talking about how beautiful the scenery is. Weird production note, this movie was actually shot in October and November in Scotland. And some of the foliage was actually fake to make it look more like spring. And Britt Eklund would complain that it was very cold and they wouldn't let them put on a whole lot of clothes. Britt Eklund's lines were also dubbed throughout the film. So just, I, I, do, I do the deep dive, so you don't have to. <laughs> fascinating, fascinating yeah. little tidbits of trivia for this film. So, Wicker Man, check it out, everybody. And then let us know if one's up or one's down next week. Well, we have just a couple more minutes. Um, I don't, do we have, do we know what we're going to do next week? Have we decided yet? Yeah. Yeah. We'll I know to we, we made some kind of a list somewhere, but I don't know. <laughs> Well, we'd have to ask our producers because I feel like it's written down have, somewhere. We it is. Written down. They have the list. <laughs> they have the list. Oh, it's Bell Book and Candle. Oh, <gasps> Bell, Bell Book and Candle. Oh, that's Staying it, with that's the classic. Fun. Staying with the classic. Mm. Okay. I'm very excited about that. Sorry. Okay. So everybody, your homework for next week is watch Bell, Book, and Candle. Okay. Anybody have anything interesting they do want to, I know we talked in the beginning, but anybody, um, one thing I do want to tell you is that everybody needs to wear what Courtney's wearing right now. You need a witch's movie coven blanket. 
Oh, and that's you, not my blanket. This is just my sweatshirt. Oh, but it is. Well, we're pretending because, it's a blanket. That's no, it. hold on. Because my blanket has migrated from the chair where it normally lives. It came with me on my road trip and then now has migrated to my bed. So it sleeps with me because it's so snuggly and delightful. And I forgot to get it out of my bed to bring it back to the chair today. So you should go to Witch's Movie Coven and get one. Yes. Which is Mystery Control. Actually, go to Mystery Control. Oh, yeah. Mom, and you could buy Witch's Movie Coven stuff. You could buy Wit Bro Witch stuff. You could buy. <gasps> I got a Bro Witch shirt. <laughs> it's, it's, it's in my room. <laughs> and you could buy we have now really launched patty's power panties of protection mm -hmm. we've got patty's spells casting so there are all sorts of really fun stuff and there's all sorts of codes which i don't know what you're supposed to give code but um patty's power panties if you like those if you put the code patty you can get 25 percent off that's huge that's practically giving you those panties everybody mm -hmm. needs magic pants superheroes have magic panties mormons have magic panties everybody <laughs> needs magic panties change your underwear change your life that's it that's all i got I love it. so um i am in town i'm going to texas at the end of the month i'm doing four days five days in dallas but i'm here for almost two weeks i'm really glad about that and what do you have don't you have just something coming up jason or? i'm home for the next two and a half months and i'm okay. thrilled my next event is in july in southern ohio the starwood festival which is the same time as mystic south there's a lot on the agenda that weekend wow anybody else have anything coming up that people can come see you at or we're all kind of home for a minute yeah. yeah i'm i'm doing mystic south uh so i will be there rather than at starwood um and that's coming up in mid-july um and we have we're i'm on the board we're about to release the schedule of all the great things witchy pagan fun stuff and um i'm doing several book related things as an editor and then also of course my talk on haunted dolls so Yay. i'm prepping i'm gonna have to have a chat with you patty and your doll there i might need some photos yeah oh so, yeah we'll um, get you some, some she bell. needs to be a star yeah. um so i'm very excited about that so that's that's in atlanta in mid-july other than that tape, i am home are you gonna tape that we would love to see that put it on video i, I, I may I may do it. We'll see. Um, I hadn't thought about it, but sure, I will think about taping it mm -hmm. yeah. or taping it. We sound we sound so decades old, Patty. I know, and I know. Recording it. <laughs> I know. Recording it. Maybe you can turn it into a film strip production. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I still have a 1978 telephone. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, recording it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And put it up on on youtube or something that would be awesome yeah um so yeah i am home too again i've got Louisville, texas miracles of joy ventura county paracon for paranormal people we're doing we have um the first week in june i think um unearthing the supernatural which is a navajo they bring their navajo nation rituals to like ghost wow. hunting and they're pretty amazing yeah. that's incredible i love what cultures are doing bringing their um, even, even the witchdom, paganness, so many, the team I just work with, um, ghost finders, they have a regular witch on their team and she opens it up with ritual. I, I filmed with them two weeks ago and we opened it up with ritual. It was beautiful. So That's everybody's great. bringing their culture. Nice. So anybody else have anything to say? Patty, I do actually. I had a really big meeting this week, a uh, very important meeting, and I wore Patty's power panties, and it went really well. <laughs> yes, yes, it, they they work, you guys. I've been doing it for decades, and you know, and now that just makes them easy because they come with a little thing. Now, did you get the spell off them? Because they don't come with a spell. The spell that you have to go, I got to figure that out, or send them. Make sure they get an email because the power. If you go onto the site. There is a little like spell when where you where you can purchase them. It's real simple. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can make. Well, a I'm gonna tell you right now. I didn't do anything like that, and they still were very very powerful. I got the witch ones, and I felt like I was the star of the show when I was wearing them, and I was in control, and I ran the show, and it was great. And I didn't do any. I, there was not no fancy footwork involved. It was just putting them on and putting my pants on over them. Because I don't go to meetings naked, unlike the people we watch in movies. <laughs> Good. I might need a quote from you. <laughs> Done. That, that was it. I might need a quote from you. You're quite that wrong. Um, so, um, anyway, well, I guess we have. 
and witches out there, you join us. We want your family in the other room to wonder what's going on. One more thing that we do every week at this time. What do witches do? One, two, three. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 